My guest today is Kim Workman, the Executive Director of Rethinking Crime and Punishment, formerly the National Director of Prison, Prison Fellowship New Zealand and with a, uh, well, a long career involved in the justice system in New Zealand. Yes. Kim, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, Andrew. Kim, do you feel we have a fair justice system in New Zealand? No, not at the, not, not at the present. I think uh, one of the challenges of, of a justice system is to be fair and treat everyone, uh, you know, with respect uh, and dignity. And uh, sometimes we get a bit confused about that and think that the only people we should treat in that way are witnesses and victims. But I think, uh, you know, the idea of justice is that it applies to everybody equally and that everybody should have access to justice whether they be offenders or victims. We have the second highest incarceration rate in the developed world, I think second behind the United States, and yes. it's, it's not a competition you want to win. However, at the same time, crime has been falling in New Zealand. Some would say that this is an indication that the system is working. Yes, well, some would say that. Uh, the crime rate has fallen steadily since 1990. Um, the imprisonment rate has really gone up, uh, almost doubled in that period between 1990-2010. One of the things we know from international research is it's almost no connection between the crime rate and the imprisonment rate. And the States is a good example of the difference between... Um, they have a, a, a declining uh, crime rate uh, and a increasing imprisonment rate. In Canada, they've had a very low imprisonment rate, almost half of ours, and a declining crime rate. So there are so many other factors that impact on, on why crime goes up or comes down. For example, in New Zealand, one of the factors that we'll find in the next 10 years is that the proportion of the population aged between 18 and 24 is going to fall considerably. That's the age group which commits most of the crime. And, you know, people commit crime at the, within that age range and then, then they grow out of it. So uh, we're going to see probably a decline regardless of what we do. What are the alternatives, though, to, um, to locking people up? If, if prison isn't the best way to deal with crime, yes. what alternatives are there? Well, I think, first of all, in New Zealand, what we have done is increase the length of imprisonments for people quite substantially, almost by 50% in the last 10 years. And we've sent more and more people to prison for short periods of time. 70% of the people in prison today will be out within six months. What we know about prison is that it causes crime. And that's difficult for people to get their head around. You know. The fact is that uh, the longer you spend in prison, the more likely you are to offend when you leave. And for young people, the best predictor of future offending is past incarceration. Mm -hmm. So prison is, is not really an answer at all to much. Apart from that 5 to 7% of, of criminals who are very dangerous and who are a threat to public safety. And from my point of view, I would say these are the people that we need to keep there possibly for life if there's no chance of them um, rehabilitating or changing. I mean, this is where it becomes an emotional issue. We all want to feel safe in our communities. Yes. We want our families yes. to be safe. And we want to, I mean, back to goodies and baddies again, if you like. Yes. We want the bad people to be yes. removed from society yes. so that they can't hurt us. Yes. Is that a fair concern? Do you uh, understand uh, that? Look, I think everybody responds to crime and punishment at an emotional level initially. You know, the initial response is, I want to feel safe. I'm frightened of these people. You know, I want to see them locked away. And that's a very understandable response. The problem comes around when you start to develop public policy around that response. Because what happens then is that you don't engage in rational thinking. You don't look at the evidence which suggests that maybe other things you could do which would get a better result. And so often when you do that, what you're doing 
is preparing for more victimization when the prisoner leaves. Uh, and so we need to ask ourselves a different sort of a question. And the question might be, what can we do to ensure that, that there are less victims in our world? What can we do to ensure that the crime rate goes down? Uh, and what are the things that work? Yeah. And uh, so really the, the test is to, let's look at the things that, that we know work and are proven to work and do some of that. There's a question about the structural uh, issues around justice. Mm -hmm. Is the system responsible for this or is it about the individual offending behaviour? And I keep going back to that, uh, 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 you know, when Jesus preached his first sermon and he talked about, uh, I'm bringing, a, you know, good news to the poor. Sometimes people forget about the poor and I don't think it was about the spiritually impoverished. I think it was about the genuinely poor people in the community. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we miss as Christians is that we tend to focus on personal evangelization and our commitment and relationship with Jesus Christ. But we forget about the hundreds of scriptures in both the Old and New Testament that are talk about relieving oppression, about clothing the naked, about uh, healing the sick and allowing the blind to see. Justice not in the context of punishment, but in the context of, of fairness, of, of mercy, of, of peace. Absolutely, and of, of fairness, of equity, of giving to those who are uh, you know, less well off. Is faith an important or even an essential aspect in rehabilitation and restoration, both for the, the criminal and the victim? Look, I, I believe it is. Um, and that we know that where there is a belief system operating and in particular, from my perspective, the Christian faith, it provides people with a framework around which to guide the rest of their life. And we know that when uh, offenders come into the faith unit, which we established within prison fellowship, that, that, um, that knowing that there's an uh, external strength, some, some, you know, they can call on God, to help them through the process. They can relate their testimony to, f to their fellow prisoners. They can talk about that relationship is an extremely powerful thing. And then when people have that relationship, they're less likely to reoffend. The kingdom of God and our justice system, is that, is that yes. what you're, you're we, looking we for? Need, we need the kingdom of God on earth in our justice system and as a valid expression of what the Christian faith is all about. Do you believe that's achievable? Yes, I do. And I've seen example after example after example of dedicated Christians who have committed that part of their life, you know, to, and calling to working with offenders. The volunteers that work in the prison, 85% of them are from the church. And we fail to recognise that in New Zealand, we have the highest ratio of Christian volunteers to prisoners of any country in the world. So there's something happening. Even so, the public expression by Christians towards crime and punishment sometimes doesn't vary very uh, significantly from that of the general public because they respond initially from that fear and that emotion rather than from a gospel uh, base. Mm. Kim Workman, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.